Welcome back to part two of the Disco Camaro rebuild. Uh, I'd like it to look like this, but it looked like that. And I forgot to mention in the first part that I did have some footage verifying that it was a barn find. It was sitting since 92. Factory air, but somebody uh, modified it so the engine would fit. I guess whatever engine they had in here. The original motor's gone, unfortunately. I tried stepping on the brakes. I'm pretty sure it's just solid rust in that master cylinder because they did not move. They were like bolted in place. But it's not bad in here. Steering looks seems pretty tight when I turn the wheel and all. Check out the custom gauges facing the windshield inside the hood scoop here. Very nice. Got the original Camaro logo without the red paint, so that indicates it's a 70. That was the only year without the red. Now we got the split bumper, but we don't have the parking lights top, so it's not an RS. I might turn it into an RS since that bottom balance is shot anyhow. Now I don't know if you can see this ZZ Top graphic going on here or whatever inspired it. <laughs> it's uh, definitely an 80s car. Last registered in 1990. And uh, I don't have the key, but I'll show you the trunk. Now, when you open the trunk, oh, it didn't happen. When I loaded it up, water kept pouring out out of one of these holes here somewhere. So I know there's been some leaking going on here, but it didn't look too bad. A lot of garbage in here right now. Got the drive shaft, extra headers, AC compressor. I don't know what this is. I wonder if it's important. Well, we'll figure it out later. Okay, I just figured out those fresh new wires and junk was from an alarm system, apparently. As I got smacked in the head by the trunk lid. Uh, the old... Oh, this is interesting. The old grill. Which I can't get out of. Now, Z28. Don't tell me this was really a Z28. Like all the other 100,000 Camaros they produced. Amazing. Oh, what a find. Well, now I'm going to make a fortune on this car. All right. The old hidden gas cap. That's cool. Oh, great. Well, I hope I have a key for that. That's neat, though. I always like that feature. I think that was pretty typical of most cars around the 70s, though. I think even my parents' Oldsmobile had that. The Olds 98. I think it had the same deal. If I'm not mistaken. Alright. Well, there's the old registration. Here's oh, 92. That was wrong. The guy told me the windshield just cracked before he put it up for sale. A goose pooped on it. He said... No kidding, he said it's split right then and there. Which is crazy, I think. I don't know if those were original mirrors. Not sure about that. Sorry I forgot to film this before I pulled it into the garage. It was a last minute thought. But, kind of get the idea. Well, here's the trunk lid. There's uh, the fold that's supposed to be on the inner side is like gone you can see it just kind of ends right there it's missing and uh i'm gonna have to seal that with some kind of seam sealer because it's really not much i can do if i weld it i'm gonna probably burn right through this side 
that piece was still there and I was able to tackle the outer corner like all along this edge and then just I'm gonna bondo that so that should be okay had one hole actually rusted through because water was getting in between here I guess and it sat when the trunk was closed it sat in that area and uh, I got metal under there looks kind of like some little kid was playing with their silly putty right now but I guarantee you it'll be nice when I'm done <laughs> don't worry about that <laughs> as far as the car goes it's got uh, pretty much coat of bondo on everything the uh, quarters are blended in they're looking pretty good need some finished sanding Had a little rust under here I ground off here and here uh, the door is not bad I did have to do a little work on the inside corner but I can't open it right now this fender is almost completely covered I should have covered the whole thing before I started sanding it I guess you're supposed to skim coat the whole thing normally if you're a professional which I'm not I don't claim to be Got this kind of set in. Got the whole bottom edge where the old fiberglass spoiler was riveted in. I got that smoothed out to match because they pretty much ran Bondo all the way up the whole balance pan here. And this side you got your assortment of dings and scratches and chips. The driver's door takes all the beating, I guess, obviously. And coming around to the back side, got the same as mirror image from the other side basically. Got the new fender in there, quarter I should say. Got that blended in pretty good, just finished sand that. I'm probably going to put the trunk lid back on, make sure I match the uh, curvature here with the, with the trunk lid, which I still have to trip. I still have to sand off, chip off the paint because it's just for some reason it didn't stick whatsoever. This purple was giving me trouble all all on the back of this car. I had to basically take a scraper, just peel it right off. They didn't do a good prep on the uh, original black, I guess, because it didn't stick at all. Need an extra job for me, but hey, I'm getting there. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now the paint's been bubbling on this spoiler. The old loose purple paint, but there's quite a bit of rust under here too. I'm gonna have to like get to the root of the cause. Almost dropped the whole lid. Boy, I tell you, I don't know how much water got in there from just on the edges or something. I don't know. I don't even know how it got in there. Hard to tell where the uh, fiberglass spoiler actually ends. I don't want to go too far. passenger door gap uh, was pretty bad. It was actually rubbing when you opened that door and in other spots it was just sticking out too far. So here I am at it. Um, 
The car came with this nice cowl induction hood as opposed to uh, this bondoed on ugly thing which is all cracking everywhere. And they pop riveted the heck out of it. I don't know. I'll never get... Man, that hood's got a... It's shot. It has a big hole in the middle and everything. So, problem is this does not fit remotely. I had to take the rubber bump stops off the back. I had to trim out, take the windshield wipers off because they were rubbing. Then I find out it's actually all the way down right on the metal frame of the body. That side seems to be okay. This side, I'm like a good three quarters, half inch in the air here. Um, well, that's where I'm at with that. Not sure what to do. And I started taking all the trim off the doors to get it ready for sanding. They used some stuff on that molding. It looks like uh, it's either plumber's putty or liquid nails. It's a hard mess. I can't even understand it. I don't know if that's original. Probably is. Other than that, uh, I got the aluminum off the back window. I don't see any rust. So I guess that was okay. The window is scratched like anything though. It's got some really bad scratches in it. I don't know if they show up on here. Okay, we're back to the fiberglass hood situation where it was rubbing on the cowl and uh, also the windshield wipers, but that's another story. So it's basically flat across the main section until you get towards the corners here where it curves downward. And uh, I'm going to cut out, I think I'm going to cut out this top skin from where I made the pencil mark on this side to roughly, well you can see where there's a big hump to where it flattens out on this side. And then I'll have to reinforce it um, probably by moving a rib. This is even with the edge of the engine cowl firewall. I might have to just bump out another one next to it. Maybe I'll put a piece of steel in there and epoxy uh, and fiberglass cloth to structurally support that, but I might have to put more of a bend in this hood too, being that it's so, it's not dished at all. It might be good for the wipers if I put a little bit of a curve in this. Because as, as you can see, I already had to cut out just for the, the one wiper arm was completely stuck in that hole. I'm not really sure if this is just a racing hood or what the idea was, but I think I can make it work, so we'll uh, make a few cuts and then uh, glass it up. Okay, so I made a relief cut by taking off the top part of the skin in the center of that support. And I made a relief cut there, which allows this to bend. Because the left front corner was sticking way up, so this will actually give, if I can move it with one hand, well, it does move. Just the inner skin, I had to be careful not to cut all the way through with a cutting wheel. I can show it now, maybe. The gap does actually close up. A little scary, but it's only fiberglass. You can always patch it back up. And I think that will do the trick. Let me test fit it now. Right, I'm going to take off a little more. I'm just going to use this cutting thing. That's not really doing much there. This needs to be extended over a little further.
it's still twisted. Um, I got this corner sticking way up, which I I know I can bend that because I made a cut underneath here. This side is still hanging up on something. I've cut away, test fitted about four or five times already. And I can't really tell what it is. And you can see this side is pretty much touching, but that side is flush. This side, I cut everything away. And then still I'm hitting, I don't know. I mean, there's a gap between the hinge, so it's not hitting the hinge. It's not bottomed out there. Can't really say. It was really hard. I don't know. Something right in this area still. All right, I had a line of the fender up. I'm trying to raise this corner from here to about here is where it's really low compared to the hood. Now, it was okay with the old hood, but since this fender has been tweaked, who knows if they did something with the other hood to line it up. At any rate, I took, there's a bolt on the side. There's one right here. There's one under the hinges here, right in the back. And once you loosen those, I mean, there's two in the bottom still, but the whole fender flops around, so I propped up the front end here to get the right height, get my door gaps reasonable. And uh, did a little pounding and a little crowbarring, and I think it's pretty close. Whatever's left, I'll have to make up uh, with Bondo. I'll have to fill this to raise up even with the hood. So that should take care of hood fitment. I still have to fiberglass the hood, but I had it on the hinges and it seemed to fit reasonably well, so. So here I am cutting a piece of steel hat channel and I bent it over my knee to get a little curve in it to put some flex in the hood and uh, drilled the underneath side on the drill press to give the fiberglass something to bite. Cleaned with acetone, fiberglassed it in, and uh, held it in the clamps. So once it was set, uh, this is what it looked like before, and this is what is cornered down, and I got the uh, passenger side latch to go down. Coming up in part three, we're going to take out the windshield and the back glass. We're going to get rid of that Dreamweaver logo, the last remnant of the disco era, and we're going to prime and paint this car, and you're going to want to see the color, and uh, I think you're going to like it. Stay tuned, guys. Take care.